But did they learn? Psalms 78, verse 29 and 30. It says, So they did eat and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust, but while the, their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. They were not estranged from their lust. Spirit of Prophecy writes in Signs of the Times, May 20, 1897, covetousness had not been cleansed from his heart, speaking of Judas. Covetousness had not been cleansed from his heart. He did not separate himself from sin, so hateful, and purify his soul by obeying the words of Jesus. Instead of this, he took offence at the word spoken to correct the ever-growing evils of the attributes of Satan. He took offence when Jesus spoke a word to correct his evil manner. Do we take offence ever? The psalmist says, Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Do we have great peace? These are signs, tokens, that the Lord is showing us that he is either leading us or we are walking a different way. When the manna was given... It was, was also, an, uh, one of the eight laws of health was particularly emphasised. Do we know which one it is? Temperance. What was said about the manna? How much should they collect every day? One omer. And how much is one omer? I looked it up in my Bible dictionary. It says approximately 2.2 litres. But some other Bibles say up to 3 litres. Some say slightly different variation. But God gave a specific quantity which they knew at that time. Said this is how much you need for the day. This will strengthen you. This will supply your needs. The law of temperance is very important when it comes to the health message. And the health message is the right arm of the gospel. The right arm of the three angels' messages. And we know the fruit of the Spirit which are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. Never is there an occasion to let go of temperance. Never. Ellen White writes... In regards to the importance of temperance, she writes in Gospel Workers, page 388, the prosperity of a nation is dependent upon the virtue and intelligence of its citizens. To secure these blessings, habits of strict temperance are indispensable. The history of ancient kingdoms is replete with lessons of warnings for us, luxury, self-indulgence, and dissipation prepared the way for their downfall. It remains to be seen whether we will be admonished by their example and avoid their fate. The prosperity of a nation, the nation of Israel. Did they prosper? They increased in number in Egypt, didn't they? But did they prosper? Having big families doesn't necessarily mean that you prosper. Did they prosper spiritually? Temperance depends on it. Let's compare a few aspects of the Israelite wanderings with our own spiritual experience. 
And let's see what Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. He wasn't here writing to the Jewish nation. He was writing to the spiritual Israel. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. And also back up in verse 5, it says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. It is clear that the Lord designs for each one of us to be priests, in his spiritual house. What was one of the examples that the priests gave us? Behind us here we see the Israelite camp and in the middle the sanctuary and the sanctuary is open and we see in the holy place three pieces of furniture. The altar of incense, the candlestick, seven branch candlestick and the table of showbread. Let's consider the table of showbread for a moment and turn to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus 25, verse 23. God is giving here instruction how to make this table. It says, Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold round about. And if we go down to verse 30, it says, And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. The bread was to be continually on this table. The priest and the priest only ate from this bread. And as soon as he ate, he replaced it with freshly baked bread. Desire of Ages, page 77, says... All the ceremonies of the feast were types of the work of Christ. The deliverance of Israel from Egypt was an object lesson of redemption, which the Passover was intended to keep in memory. The slain lamb, the unleavened bread, the sheaf of firstfruits represented the Saviour. With most of the people in the days of Christ, the observance of this feast had degenerated into formalism. But what was its significance? But what a significance?